Hey everybody, welcome back to another epic boat project video. This one will be one long part, so stick around to the end. In this video I will be showing you how to assemble the Origin wakeboard tower. It shares the design of a lot of other similar wakeboard towers, and then we will install it on this boat, turning it from this to this. If you want to do this you can by following this video. All right, as you can see from that intro, we're putting this wakeboard tower on this boat. This will work for a wide range of boats as this is a universal wakeboard tower. Now there are a couple quick disclaimers that I have to say before this video gets going. One is anytime you are drilling holes in your hull, be aware that you are weakening the entire integrity of your hull. Now, if you do it the right way, it shouldn't be a huge concern, as you will see as this video goes along. Another disclaimer is, obviously, anytime you add something of this size to your boat, you are adding weight. So always keep that in the back of your head when you are weighing gear or the amount of people, etc. Okay, now let's see how this thing arrived, how it was packaged and let's see how it assembles dry in my garage and then moving forward it will get installed on this. This video may get a little lengthy and I'm sorry about that. I will have chapter selections on the bottom so go ahead and follow those if you want to skip a step no problem. But this is going to be a complete step-by-step -step guide from beginning to end how to put this tower on pretty much any boat. So I hope you enjoy and follow along. Okay, as stated, this is an Origin Wakeboard Tower. It is very similar to a lot of other off-brand or even name-brand wakeboard towers, kind of a one-size-fits-all uh, situation here. So this will fit a wide range of boats. Now let's get it out of this box and see what it comes with. I will say it is packed very well. Whoops, that's actually not part of the packaging. I'll get into that later. Aside from that, it is packed very well, and it's highly unlikely that this would ever show up damaged. Each tube is individually wrapped, so this thing is going to be very safe for shipping. Lots of hardware there. Okay, so this box just has a whole bunch more hardware like this and the joints. Okay, it's all unpacked and I'll show you every piece here in a second. One thing to note, uh, I was looking for instructions while unpacking this. There are no instructions packed with it. You have to go to their website to find the instructions. Once again, I will have the link to the instructions for this exact wakeboard tower in the description section of this video. So if you're looking for it and you found this video first, you will have easy access to the actual printed out instructions. This is polished aluminum, not stainless steel. One, lightweight. Two, it could possibly corrode in the distant future, but just keep it clean and you won't have to worry about that. The top toe bar has an option for a white round light. So if that's something you want to do, you can. You just remove that cap, run the wiring to the additional light, and you are set. If you are curious, here is the warnings that it gives you. All the scary warnings about how you could die having too much fun. We won't worry about that. And here is the hardware laid out nicely. Your joints. The aluminum washers, your Allen keys, all the fun bolts, flat washers, nope, backwards, flat washers, um, concave convex washers. So you've got a straight washer here, rubber washer, and then you've got some, I don't know if that's showing up good on camera, but 
the washer is actually thinner in some spots and thicker so that it can form to the hull. And this is what fell out of the package in the beginning of the video. This is not sent with it. This is something I ordered separately. It's just some uh, quarter inch thick, I believe, aluminum plating. I'm going to cut them in half, maybe even smaller. And that's for the additional bracing that's recommended for the wakeboard tower itself. It adds stability to the hull, which honestly you are compromising a little bit by drilling a big hole in it for the wakeboard tower to mount to. You're drilling four big holes in your hull. So if that alone scares you, maybe you shouldn't install this tower. Uh, it doesn't scare me. I'm going to do a really good job at it. I'm going to reinforce it like it says. All right, next I am going to dry assemble this off of the boat so I can get a good idea of what it's going to look like and how I want to place it on the boat, etc. I'm going to do my best to give you a step-by-step -step without boring you. Again, if this does bore you, go ahead and skip through the video. All right, hopefully this doesn't get too long. Let's do it. For the first step, you're going to want two of your shorter Allen bolts with the large Allen key, and we're working with the longer tubes, the front tubes. You're gonna want two of these hole fittings, they're called, in the instructions, uh, and you're gonna want the non-threaded one. There are two in the kit that are threaded right here. Right here they're threaded. You want the non-threaded ones for this, and we're going to be in assembling this like so, actually like this. It's gonna go on to the long legs like this. So just like this, and I'm gonna leave everything very loose for this process and dry fit. But again, I'm not going to be using Loctite at this time. That loose so I can do this. And do the same thing with the other front leg. Be sure to be putting on your lock washers. So that's the first step in the instructions. Okay, now we're going to be working with this L-shaped bracket. It does say there is a left and a right for these long tubes and a left and a right for these. However, it is not marked and it says if you are in doubt, you can swap them later. So I guess we're kind of at a 50-50 shot of getting this right the first time. Okay, so that is what you want it to look like. Just like that, this bracket going backwards on the inside of the long arch here, looking like this, just like this. So now repeat this step on the other long arch. Okay, moving on to the short legs, you want to put one of the non-threaded joints on the short legs. One on each side, and then one on each side of the threaded. Okay, the next step you're going to find, they call this the S knuckle mount. You're going to want to take this piece that will eventually mount to your hull and attach it to this S knuckle and then attach the S knuckle to the front legs. This is how you do it. Just like this. So this gives you more movement when mounting to the hull on the side, on the side of the boat or even on the top depending on your situation. So repeat that step on the other leg. Okay, the next step is the only two mounts you have left go on the non-threaded knuckle on the short arms. All right, I'm gonna rough assemble this and set it up. There's a few bolts I have to tighten. I left things a little too loose, but I will worry about that when I get to the bolt portion. I will do that off camera. Just snug so that stuff doesn't fall but loose enough where you can still kind of move the joints. So that's the dry fit. Next, we go to the boat, measure things, and put it on. 
All right, as you can see, we got the wakeboard tower assembled dry just in the garage. Now the next step obviously is getting it on the boat. Now there's a couple things I did off camera which I will show you. And that is mark out where I want the front posts for the wakeboard tower to go. And this is the very crucial part of everything. You have to make sure you're measuring this thing out square so that it goes on the boat square and isn't crooked or offset or anything like that. Okay, so the main thing here is that you want to find the center of the boat. What I did here was I measured this spot. You can't go off of cleats because they might not be square, being that they are an add-on. This part right here of the boat is actually molded. So it's gonna be the most symmetrical and square spot on the front. So what I did was measured across, found center and marked with a pencil. It'll wipe off easy. Then you measure from this part that is true center of the boat to where you want your front post. So I used the uh, washer and measured that. So now, this one I just visually, okay, this is where I want it. So then I measured the distance from that point to here and copied it to the other side of the boat so that I know that this front post will be in the exact same spot on the other side. And that looks like this on this side right here. Another big thing to note is that you want to make sure you're going to clear any obstacles on the back side of whatever you're measuring. Right here on this side, my biggest concern was the fuel fill neck. Uh, I verified it does go straight down, so there's nothing in the way here, and there's nothing on the way on the other side. Once you have these measured out and marked, you can do the scariest part of the entire project, and that's drilling massive half-inch holes into your hull. Ah, I know, it's so terrifying. <laughs> Once you have everything marked out, it's time to drill that pilot hole and then the big hole. Got it. After your first hole is drilled, it's time to get your friend to insert it into the hole and utilize those backing plates I was talking about earlier. What you see us doing here is a rough fit. We are attaching the back leg to the front leg and eyeballing where we want it, what height we want it, etc., before marking out the rear location and drilling the hole. And then again, obviously, drill your big hole for the mounting bolt and have your buddy hold it while you tighten it down snug. Okay, as you can see, I have this side done. So what you need to do is repeat this exact same process on the other side. The only crucial point to note is that what you could see me doing was eyeballing this back leg as to how I wanted everything to look. Uh, this is roughly six feet from that one. I know it doesn't look it, but it is six feet. So what you're going to want to do when you get to this back leg on the other side is you can't just eyeball it. What you have to do is measure. Since you measured this and you know both these are square on each side, you're going to want to measure from here to the rear one. And then measure the distance from your bumper here because these are generally pretty square. Measure the distance from there up and that will get you center on the other side. All right, once you get to this point, 
that is the final step that you have to put the T-bar in. And this T-bar comes with these little plastic inserts. Do not take them out. They almost kind of act like a little bit of a lubricant, so it makes it easier putting the pipe on and it protects it from scratches. So leave those in until you're ready to drill your holes, then you can yank them out. And you're going to need a friend like you've seen through this process. He's a big dumb animal, but he gets the job done. <laughs> I'm gonna need your help. Okay. I'm gonna need you to hold side you on, this side's fine. Okay, I sped this part up because this was actually the hardest part of the entire process. That top bar did not want to go in, and I will explain more in the next scene here. Okay, this part is extremely tricky. Uh, as you can see, there was a struggle. I sped it up for you so you didn't have to sit there bored. But uh, it's extremely tricky. I ended up having to unbolt a few things and fit this tube into the T and uh, then pry together the two front arms. I think they do that for strength. It's called preload. Regardless, it's hard and I don't know how you do it on your own. You really need a second set of hands. Uh, once you have everything just the way you like it, this is set up straight or just tipped a little bit forward. Uh, I went with straight with mine. Then you can drill these holes and go ahead and tighten this up 100%. Also, I went ahead and tightened up the through holes 100% uh, also because those I don't want moving because unfortunately you have to take this all back off and tighten with Loctite these bolts. All right, everybody, I kind of left you hanging there at the end. You really didn't miss much. All you need to know, you want to mark the knuckles, where these knuckles spin. You want to mark those and you're going to take them off piece by piece and you're going to take the bolt that goes this way laterally into this tube in the front tube. You want to take those back out, put Loctite on them, line your marks up, and tighten it back down, reassemble everything, and you're done. That's the only thing I didn't show on camera. It was very tedious and tricky, and I just kind of had to get it done. So as far as everything else goes, you saw how it works. And that about wraps this video up. Thank you everybody again so much for watching. Uh, again, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I hope this video gave you a lot of insight as to how these types of wakeboard towers mount. And uh, keep an eye out. Also, I will be doing a lake day video. Uh, just telling you how it's been working for me, how it's standing up, things I like, things I don't, uh, etc. So keep an eye out for that. When available, it will be linked in the description section below. Also with a video end card at the end of this video. Also, anything that you think you may need for this project will be linked in the description section as well. Like tools I used, I will have a list of what I used. And I will give a link to where I purchased this wakeboard tower for how much I purchased it. But I do know it went up $100 since then. So the link will bring you directly to it and you can decide if this is something you want or not. All right, again, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Painful. <laughs> 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 smells like a boat. <laughs>